Today I've got this really nice geometry problem. So let's say we've got two identical ellipses, one that's been rotated 90 degrees. And then we arrange them in the plane so that their centers overlap. Let's also suppose that the major axis of each ellipse has length 2 times a, and the minor axis has length 2 times b. And next up we're going to inscribe two squares inside one of the ellipses and outside of the other ellipse. And our goal is to find the side length of each of these squares. Well, I guess they're the same square, so all we have to do is find the side length of one of the squares. So I'd like to observe really, really quickly that the diagonal of the square is pretty clearly a minus b. That's because we have a units from the center of the ellipse to one vertex of the square, maybe the furthest right vertex. And then it's B units from the center of the ellipse to the closest vertex. And so that difference is pretty clearly going to give us a diagonal of the square. But notice we know that we can relate the diagonal of a square, which we've just determined is A minus B, with the side length, which maybe we'll call x, using the Pythagorean theorem. Observe that we have x squared plus x squared is equal to a minus b quantity squared. But here we see pretty quickly that x is going to be equal to 1 over the square root of 2 times a minus b. And so it seems like we're done, but in fact we're not done because, as you might imagine, not all possible values of a and b will permit a square to be inscribed the way that we've been having it inscribed. So now we're going to calculate the relationship between a and b that will make this type of situation work. So thanks for sticking around this long into the video. If you're enjoying the video, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you're not yet subscribed, consider subscribing. It really helps us out. Okay, so so far we've determined that the side length of the square in question is a minus b over root 2, where those numbers a and b were related to the major and the minor axes of our ellipse. So now I've taken one of these squares and one of these ellipses and I've put it in the plane. And so here I've got my ellipse in yellow. Notice that it has equation x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1 giving us a coordinate right here of a comma zero, a coordinate right here of zero comma b. Let's also recall this ellipse that's not shown would go up and down like this, and the maybe leftmost vertex of the square intersects with that ellipse. And because it's just a rotation of the ellipse that we have drawn, we know that this coordinate is b comma zero. But that means that we know the coordinates of these two other vertices. Well, at least we know the x-coordinates immediately. And that's because the x-coordinates are simply the average or the midpoints of this a and b thing. So we've got a, let's see, that should be a plus b over 2, comma, what I'll call y plus, that'll be the y-coordinate. And here we have a plus b over 2 comma y minus. That'll be the y coordinate for that. But let's notice that these two coordinates have to satisfy the equation defining this ellipse. And so that should give us some sort of way to solve for y plus and y minus. Okay, so let's get to it. So let's see. We know that a plus b squared over 4a squared. So that's what we get from plugging in x equals a plus b over 2 and then simplifying a little bit. Plus y squared over b squared must be equal to 1. But now here we can solve for y pretty easily. So let's observe that we'll get something like this. y squared over b squared equals... 1 minus, so now we're going to have a squared plus 2ab plus b squared all over 4 times a squared. Now we can multiply both sides by b squared, maybe combine everything together, and then take the square root. And that'll give us these numbers, y plus minus is equal to plus minus b times the square root of 3a squared minus 2ab minus b squared, and that's going to be all over 2 times a. 
So that's just a straightforward calculation, solving this above equation for y squared, and then taking the positive and negative square root. So now I'd like to observe that we have a square over here only when the two diagonals have the same length. But notice this horizontal diagonal has a length that's pretty easy to calculate. That's simply a minus b. And then the vertical diagonal has a length that's also pretty easy to calculate. That's y plus minus y minus equals b times the square root of 3a squared minus 2ab minus b squared all over 2 times a. But now we can square both sides and rearrange things and we'll see that we get the following equation. So we'll have a to the fourth and then minus 2a cubed b minus 2a squared b squared and then plus 2ab cubed and then finally plus b to the fourth equals zero. But perhaps surprisingly, this has a nice factorization. In fact, it factors like a minus b times a plus b times a squared minus two times a b minus b squared. Now, of course, we're not working with a circle here because if we were working with a circle, no such square would exist in the first place. So we know that a is not equal to b. So we can't have a plus b equal to zero either because both of those are positive. So that means we must have this relationship right here, a squared minus 2ab minus b squared equals zero. So let's see where that takes us. We just determined that for such a square to exist, we needed the following relationship between a and b, those numbers associated to the minor and major axes. But notice that we can solve this for b in terms of a or a in terms of b. And what will we get? Well, let's see, maybe we use the quadratic formula where a is the variable. So here we'll have a equals, so that's gonna be two times b, plus minus the square root of four b squared plus four b squared, all over two. So it's a bit tricky because the roles of our variables and the roles of our constants are pretty similar to what you might see when you write the quadratic formula down, but that's what you get. But now what does this turn into? Well, let's observe that this right here will be eight b squared, which be, will be turned into two times b times the square root of two. So in the end, what do we have? So we're gonna have these twos canceling. We can factor a b out and we'll have b times one plus square root of two. So in other words, a equals b plus one times the square root of two. Now, notice I can get rid of the minus sign there because I would get a negative length for a, which clearly doesn't make any sense. So that's the relationship we need for such a square to exist. But now let's plug that into what we have up here and see what happens. So let's see, we're gonna have the side length of the square, which I'll go back to calling x again. So that's gonna be b plus the square root of two times b minus b all over the square root of two when all is said and done. But notice two of those b's cancel, the square roots of two cancel and we're left with b. And that's a good place to stop.